Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we have been talking about matrices as a convenient way of representation of linear transformations. Uh, and um, right now, uh, I would like to introduce a few basic operations uh, on matrices, which definitely um, should be introduced uh, since matrix is just a new object. We have invented this object. And uh, as usually after we invented something, we have to know what to do with this. So, these basic operations are really quite trivial and uh, they do not really represent the, um, the essence of linear transformations. Um, they are just abstract, formal, if you wish, operations which can be done with um, matrices as well as with any sets of numbers and operations are quite trivial actually so um, first of all um, I would like to mention one more thing here um, mostly we will be dealing with um, square matrices of 2 by 2 size uh, like this or 3 by 3 size which is something like this. So these two types of matrices represent linear transformations of plane, two-dimensional space, and uh, three-dimensional space. Um, obviously, matrices can be of any dimension. I mean, matrix is a table, right? So the table can have certain number of rows and certain number of columns and uh, it can be different, for instance, 25 rows by 75 columns. Um, we will just probably spend a little less time on, on, on these abstract uh, matrices and spend more time on uh, square matrices of 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 size. However, whatever the operations we are talking today, they are applicable to all matrices of any dimension. So, let's start first operation is addition okay now basically it's again not really related to matrices it's related to any two sets of numbers how can we think about addition of two different sets of numbers well number one the number of elements in these sets must be the same and then we just add corresponding elements. They're, they're supposed to be ordered, like first, second, third, etc. And we will just add first element of the first set to the first element of the second set. And that would be the first element of the result. Um, 25, uh, 25th element of the first set, we will add to 25th element of the second set, and that would be the, the 25th element of the result. So, basically, if we are talking about addition of two matrices, we are talking about addition of matrices of exactly the same size, the same number of rows and the same number of columns, and we will just correspondingly add them. So if you have a matrix like this, which is 3 by 2, 3 rows by 2 columns, plus matrix like this, also three rows and two columns. It's very important so uh, the, the sizes are supposed to be the same. Then the result will be, okay, first row, first column, three, first row, second column, three, second row, uh, first column, six, four and two, six, five and four, nine, six and five, eleven. So, we are adding corresponding elements. The element at uh, row i column j is added to row i column j, getting row i column j of the result. So that's basically the addition. Now, it's quite obvious that this addition is commutative. Why? Because the matrices have exactly the same size and each element of the result is a sum of corresponding elements but the correspondence is exactly the same regardless of how we put 
these two. So it's first column, first uh, first row, first column, and first row, first column, or 27th row and 17th column, 27th row and 17th column. So if we will add them in any order, the result would be exactly the same. So that's why it's commutative. It's also associative, in exact, exactly for the same reason, which means A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. This associativity follows from the associativity of the plain addition of the numbers. Uh, since again, the order is exactly the same, sizes are exactly the same, so um, it follows from the associativity of the addition for plain numbers. That's it for addition. I mean, it's an abstract operation which, again, I don't claim it will play a significant role in our usage of matrices um, as linear transformations. However, um, you know, it, for completeness, probably we should introduce this operation. Now, by the way, the reason operation of multiplication of matrices and this operation plays extremely significant role in transformations, in linear transformations. But that would be the subject of the next lectures. All right, now next, uh, uh, again, quite trivial operation. It's multiplication of the matrix by scalar number lambda in this case. Now, um, it's basically a an, an multiplication of each element of the matrix A by a scalar, a plain number lambda. So if you want to multiply 2 by matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, then you will get 2, 4, 6, 8. So you multiply this number by each of those guys. Now, again, since the um, corresponding, cor since there is a correspondence between this matrix and this matrix, it's the same size, the same number of elements in each row, in each column, and each element is just uh, of the new matrix is the old one uh, times this particular number. Then it's quite obvious that if you will have two numbers, let's say lambda and mu times a, then you can multiply this way. Now this will give you a, a new matrix, and the new matrix is multiplied by the number. It will be, uh, again, a matrix. It will be the same as if you will multiply the numbers by themselves, and then the result will multiply their matrix a. So that's very easy to, uh, to see, because again, the numbers, as they are multiplied, are associ uh, associative. Similarly, um, you can say that there is also the associativity as far as multiplication of the numbers, something like this. So these are three numbers. So you can multiply it this way, or you can multiply it this way, or you can multiply it this way. Doesn't really matter because, again, these are all numbers, and this is a matrix which has exactly the same size as the result, and every member of the resulting matri matrix I, I, is just a result of multiplication by, by these numbers. Now, what's also interesting is now we can introduce the distributive law, but again, it's only distributive as far as multiplication by a scalar. So, this, where the addition of matrix is, as I was explaining, just corresponding condition of each element, obviously it, it, it is exactly the same as this. And this distributive law follows uh, from the distributive law of plain addition, because for each element of this matrix and each corresponding element of this matrix, that would be true. So if you will take, let's say, element on, uh, on the crossing of i's row and j's uh, column of this matrix, it's supposed to be added to element uh, of this matrix on the same row. 
then the result would be multiplied and that would be the ij element of the result but this would be exactly the same because the uh, result of this summation is actually the ij's element of this matrix plus ij's element of this matrix and that would give you the ij's element of the result, right? I use the same letter because eventually it will be the same. Now, what is this? The ij's element of this matrix is lambda times aij and this matrix would be lambda bij, right? And now we can factor out lambda because for real numbers this is, the, the, the distributive law is true and that's why we see that this is exactly the same as this and that's why we will have exactly the same result as this this is actually a proof by the way I mean it's obvious from certain philosophical uh, viewpoint but if somebody asks you to prove this particular thing this is how you can prove it so I'm using this particular um, uh, notation for uh, specifying the element which is on i's row and j's column of this matrix so this basically is the way how you can prove by element by element for each i uh, changing uh, from number one to whatever the maximum row and for each j from again number one to whatever is maximum column so this is a distributive law um, relative to addition of matrices. Now, there is a similar distributive law relative to addition of numbers. And the proof is exactly the same. Let me just use this particular notation I have just introduced. So let's take the element um, well, well, first of all, the dimensions of the matrices are the same, right? Because the dimension of the matrix A doesn't really change if you multiply it by number, doesn't change if you multiply by another number, and doesn't change if you add them together. And again, it's exactly the same as multiplication of A by some number. So the dimensions on the left and on the right are exactly the same. So let's check what is the element... which stands uh, at the row i and column j of the left, left matrix. Well, this is a multiplication of a number by a matrix, right? So the ij's element of the result of this multiplication is the same number multiplied by ij's element of the matrix A. This is a definition, basically, of the multiplication of the number. But this is the same as this because among numbers we know the distributive law is true now what is this I can say that this is again by definition at an ij's element of this matrix and this is by definition of the multiplication of the matrix by number is also the same ij's element of, the, of this multiplication now if I have two matrices the definition of addition is the ij's element of the result is a sum of these two uh, uh, elements That's by definition of the addition. So this is by definition of, uh, of multiplication by number. This is also multiplication by number. And uh, this is the definition of addition of two matrices. That ij's element of the result is sum of ij's element of the components. That's basically the proof, right? So we have proven that every element which stands at row i and uh, uh, column j of this matrix exactly equal to 
the ij's element of this matrix. That's why matrices are exactly the same. Okay, and the last um, operation on matrices, it actually is um, not exactly that trivial as these two, uh, and it also will play a significant, well, more significant role uh, when we were using the matrices as transformations. Now, it's called transposition of the matrix, and let me just explain what it is on an example. Let's say you have a matrix like this. Now, transposition is and it's, uh, it's using the power uh, notation with the letter T. The transposition matrix is I will use every row as a column and obviously every column is a row. So 1, 2 would be my first column, 3, 4 will be my second column, and 5, 6 will be my third column. So that's what transposition means. Okay, so I just, uh, I don't know how to say it. I transpose <laughs> matrix. I should say revert, but it's not a reversion. It's basically a transposition. Now, if we are talking about a square matrix, transposition would be now, look at these two. They are symmetrical relative to the main diagonal. Right? So whatever stands on the main diagonal of a square matrix doesn't really change the transposition. That doesn't really change during the transposition. And whatever elements on the um, top right corner go to the bottom left corner, exchange places with them. So it's uh, like a reflection relatively, re relatively to diagonal. With non-square matrix, you can't really say it's reflection, um, but, but basically the sense is exactly the same. Now, let me, now you, since you understand what, what exactly I mean when I'm talking about transposition, let me just talk about uh, exact definition. So let's consider you have a matrix A which has a dimension M by N. So M rows and M columns. Since I'm using rows as columns, now my dimension of the transposed matrix would be n times m, right? Since every row becomes uh, a, a column and every column become, becomes a, a, a row, so number of columns becomes number of rows and number of rows becomes number of columns, right? So this is the result. And indeed, in this case, this is matrix 3 by 2, right? 3 rows by 2. And this is matrix 2 by 3. Two rows, three columns. So this is number one. Number two, if you take an element ij of this matrix, by definition it's element G, uh, ji of the original matrix. Right? Look at this, for instance, this two. It's one, two. And this two is two, one. Second row, first column. Three. This is second row, first column. So the coordinate of this is two, one. Coordinate of this is one, two. So indices are changing places. So that's basically a definition. This is a definition of the operation of transposition. Now, what kind of properties of the transposition we can mention in this particular case. Well, there are a couple of properties. Number one, which is kind of obvious, if you transpose the matrix twice, what happens? Well, you will return basically to the, to, to, to the same thing. First, you're using columns as row and rows and columns, 
and then you do it again, rows and columns and columns and rows. So you do twice exactly the same thing, and you will get exactly the same thing here. Now, another trivial property is this one. So if you multiply a transposition, transposed matrix by a number, it's exactly the same thing as to multiply original by this number and then transpose. Why? Well, because the multiplication doesn't really change the structure of the ma ma matrix. It just adds a multiplier to each its member. So the multipliers will just uh, m move together with original elements, and that's why that's true. And similarly, addition also doesn't really change the fact. So first you add two matrices, and then you transpose the result. Or you transpose the results of each individual uh, matrix, and then add them together. Obviously, we'll get the same thing. Now, as far as the proof of this, I, I, I don't want really to go into the details. It's, it's kind of trivial. So these are properties of the operation of transposition. Again, that actually this operation will, will, will play some, some role further on. As far as the previous two operations, multiplication by a number and addition uh, of two matrices, well, they have a really very narrow application in, in, in other um, uh, cases, in other um, topics related to matrices. But probably it would be necessary just from the formal standpoint, from the abstract standpoint, to introduce them. Well, that's it for today. And um, again, let me remind you that these are very basic operations, very simple operations. The most important operation on matrices is multiplication of matrices, because it's really reflected the transformation character of the matrix. And that will be the subject of the next lectures. Thank you, and good luck.